tool we're going to cover is the pan and zoom tool. Now this is a very fast and easy to use tool that helps break one of the traditional barriers of chroma keying. Usually if you're shooting on a green screen, you usually end up with a bunch of static lockdown shots because you can't really move the camera because it can be very difficult to try and match move a background and your talent at the same time. With the ultra pan and zoom tool, you can shoot a static lockdown shot, but still end up with a really nice camera motion, a nice slow push in or pull out to your shot. Let me show you how that works. We'll start by doing a new project. And we're going to load up a sample session called pan and zoom. And this particular shot, one of the first things I want to point out here, you'll notice that our green screen footage, we've got our talent over on the right hand side of the screen in the original clip, but in the composite he's now over on the left hand side of the clip. This was just done using the scene tab, which we talked about earlier, and we just simply went in and flipped him around 180 degrees. The reason we did this is because we have this beautiful composited shot with a nice monitor in the background, and if we left our talent over on the right hand side, he'd be blocking the monitor. To set up the pan and zoom feature, all we need to do is set two different key points. Uh, you'll see in the pan and zoom tab, we've got pan and zoom point one and pan and zoom point two. This represents where we start and where we're going to end up. To start with, I'm going to go ahead and hit all four of the reset buttons. The bottom reset buttons reset the positioning, and the top reset buttons set up the, or they reset the time for our shot. Now we're going to set the end point where we want our zoom to start. To do that, just scrub through the clip to the point at which you want to start your zoom. In this case, I'm going to go to about three seconds and hit the set button. And this sets the beginning of where our zoom is going to start. Now we'll scrub to where we want the zoom to end. And then we'll hit set for the time we want our zoom to end. To actually adjust the level of zoom that we want to use, I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and I'm going to drag up and down on this grid pattern here. And you'll see as I drag downward, it zooms in on the overall image. If I want to pan around the image, I let go of the shift key, and then I can pan around the image using the same grid pattern. So I can get my shot framed exactly the way I want. That's really it. That's all you have to do. At this point, I can scrub through my clip, play the clip back at speed, and you can see that I've applied a zoom that starts at three seconds and ends at seven seconds. You'll notice that the way the motion works within a pan and zoom shot, Ultra automatically adds in a nice professional ease in to a pan or zoom and a nice ease out to a pan and zoom. This is an automatic function of the software. There's nothing special you have to do to use this. It just adds a really nice professional look to the camera motion. Now just to talk for a moment about the amount of zoom that you can use within a shot. If you're using Ultra's virtual sets, especially if you're using a virtual set with a B-source monitor, you can actually zoom all the way into that B-source monitor. Uh, when you're using the pan and zoom feature, Ultra is always going back to the original source files. So if you have a background image that's a higher resolution than video, it will maintain that resolution as you zoom into the image. So you can use a background of a much higher resolution, and that way you've got a lot more to zoom into. In this case, I'll show you an example here. I'm actually going to change my zoom point. So what I'll do is I'll highlight the time and I'll match this with the time for my zoom point here. So we'll go to exactly seven seconds. And we're gonna make a more extreme zoom here. I'm gonna again hold down my shift key and I'm gonna zoom all the way into this monitor. And we'll go ahead and change that out. You can put any type of video clip in this case, I'm going to put a different still into this monitor. And you'll see that I can zoom all the way into this monitor without losing any resolution. So now my zoom at three seconds into the clip, I zoom all the way into that monitor. So this is going to be a handy trick if you're trying to do a transition from 
your green screen footage into some other type of video source. You can do a nice zoom within the Ultra software, and then in your editing program, just add a little dissolve between uh, the beginning of the clip and then the rest of the clip and let it play out on your timeline. Now, a different type of transition, maybe we want to start zoomed in on the monitor, and then we want to end up zooming out to this full, full screen shot. To do that, let me go through and reset my key points. And this time we're going to use point one, and we're actually going to zoom in on point one. So once again, I'll set my end point. And I'll hold down the shift key and I'll zoom in on point one. And then I'll set my out point on point two. And so now I've reversed the effect. Now I start zoomed in on my monitor for the first three seconds of the clip, and then it pulls back to reveal my set. The last type of use for the pan and zoom feature, you can actually do a three-point pan and zoom. Um, by doing this, you need to start off full screen. And there's a little button that you'll see down here marked Start Zoomed. And by default, that box is usually checked. Well, for this particular setup, let me start by resetting my key points. And I'm going to uncheck that Start Zoomed box. Because what we're going to do now is we're actually going to start at zero. We're starting at one to one. We're starting full screen. Now I'm going to set my first zoom into the image. And again, I'll hold down the shift key and zoom in, in this case, to the upper left part of the image. And now for my second point, I'll set my point there. And in this case, I'm going to zoom in over to my monitor. So now we've created a three-point zoom that starts by zooming to the upper left corner and then pans over to my monitor. So this gives me a different way that I can use the pan and zoom tool, and this way I have actually three points within my project.